Well, hidey ho, quick advice don't use an X Acto knife to pick at your toenails. I'm not even going to tell you why. I'm just saying, don't do it. I have reasons. We're starting today's core daily with a text because, uh, well, this one hit home. So let's read it. Hi, Scott and crew says bread for me. Really enjoying the daily core in my life. And I love the main podcast. I have a question about tower defense games. You say you hate them, but you never get into why. Why do you hate them? Thanks and keep it up, says bread for me. Well, thank you, Bread, for me, and thank you for using 801-471-0462 to send your text. Uh, I really appreciate it, and everyone out there listening, you're encouraged to do the same. So I have talked about it a couple of times why I I dislike it. Um, I really don't like tower defense, like, at all. Like, my first exposure to it, I think, was some people modding Warcraft 3 maps back in, like, 2004, maybe 05, and they were, you know, full full blown game modes that were centered around tower defense. And I didn't like it then, and I don't like all of the sort of uh retail and full fledged games or otherwise that have come out since that claim to be primarily tower defense games. That's an important distinction, which I'll get to in a minute. Um let me define what I don't actually like about tower defense by first giving you a definition of what tower defense is. According to Wikipedia, tower defense or T D for short, is a subgenre of strategy games where the goal is to defend a player's territories or possessions by a obstructing the enemy attackers or by stopping enemies from reaching the exits usually achieved by placing defensive structures on or along their path of attack. This typically means building a variety of different structures that serve to automatically block, impede, attack, or destroy those enemies. And it goes on to explain more. There's a whole history behind this. In fact, if I read down here a little bit further, some of its origins are attributed to games like Missile Command from 1980. You know, you're you're defending, I guess you're defending your yourself by using sort of missile turrets. I mean, it's a little bit of a stretch. Other games like Defender, Choplifter, uh, they even list uh, the Atari 2600 version of The Empire Strikes Back, uh, which I do not have any connection to, so I couldn't tell you why that the, why that one's used there. But really, it's modern in, uh, incarnations, and I could go even deeper and like say Rampart. You could talk about that. You could talk about a lot of those, uh, a lot of games from a, an older era, but really it was those Warcraft 3 maps and mods that came out while Warcraft 3 was at its height. And then there was a huge boon between like, I'd say 07 and 2008, kind of in that range where it exploded. Started with some small flash-based stuff that people were playing on their browsers. And then games like Desktop Tower Defense, that was very popular. Uh, the one on Flash I remember playing was Element Tower Defense, which is also listed in the Wikipedia article. Um, Bloons, Gemcraft, Ninja Town, Locks Quest, Plants vs. Zombies technically is a uh, tower defense kind of game. Pixel Junk Monsters, that was an early one for me on PlayStation. Anyway, you know what we're talking about here. And the app stores, the Apple and Android app stores, chock full of this stuff. Bloons, uh, other ones whose names I can't think of, partly because I just don't play these. All right. For the most part, I don't enjoy pure tower defense games. But like I just mentioned, Plants vs. Zombies. Plants vs. Zombies is rad, okay? It's really good. And it's not pure tower defense. There's more going on there. What I don't like is, all right, set up all your turrets, get all your towers ready, uh, upgrade them to do whatever, and now go. Here come the bad guys, and the bad guys come funneling in, and you just wait for stuff to happen. You sort of sit there and see if it all worked out okay. I don't like that. Not a fan. And I don't like it much more when it's basically that game, but you can upgrade your defenses during the run. That's not interesting to me either. Maybe it's because my strategic mind just doesn't lean this way and I'm not good at it. I'm happy to admit that I just don't feel like I'm successful at stemming off waves of enemies. But there are exceptions to this. Some people have stated the the, the game Monster Train, which is a fantastic uh, card battler thing, um, uh, deck builder game that plays a lot like Slay, Slay the Spire, a game similar to that. It basically is a three-level train, and you're putting cards, aka these NPC-type characters, uh, both defensive and offensive. You're putting them at different levels of the train to fend off an enemy attack, and how is that different than playing uh, tower defense? I, I don't even have a good answer for that, because you're right. Some of those elements are definitely tower defensey. For some reason, it doesn't hit the same. And I love that game. I could play that game all day, despite those features. So it's a very specific line of games that I don't like. Typically, they're top-down view. Not always, though. Orcs Must Die 1 through 3, 
they're similar. They're also very active. So you're you're setting up a uh, setting up a bunch of defenses, and then when everything kicks off, you're in the midst of it fighting. Right? I don't like that game either. I don't like all the setup. I don't like all the defense setup stuff. You know, and I go back to when I was a kid, the idea of like setting up a fort for your <laughs> for your snowball fights actually seems like a rad idea. And I'm pretty sure I did stuff like that. We had cardboard and whatever, plywood for my dad's garage. And that was a fun part of it. You would set up your defenses and offenses and then you would have your fight. Why that doesn't translate well to a video game for me I don't know. Uh, you know, one notable place that tower defense has really taken off is Roblox. Kids love that, man. I don't know what's going on. We got a whole generation who loves it. And I want to make this very clear. I don't have a problem with other people loving a subgenre like this at all. Let me have games I don't like and you can have the ones you don't like. You know what I mean? So just to lay it out again, here, here's what I don't like. So that's it. I hope that answers your question. And again, I'm not here to tell anybody to enjoy uh, one thing over another or not enjoy a thing over another. I just, I just personally can't stand that as a, as a subgenre. And I'm sure there are people out there who, you know, hate roguelites or likes uh, or any of the rogue style games where you know you're doing a lot of things on repeat. You die, you go back, you upgrade, you go try it again. You're more powerful this time. That stuff. I love those games. I'm always looking for a new little bit of crack in that space. But I know there are people that can't stand that trend. And I get it. It's not your thing. And it shouldn't be. Somebody yesterday said, I'm excited. Oh, no, it's in the YouTube comments somewhere in here. You can find it. it. said he didn't know why he was not excited or he's absolutely not excited at all about Diablo 4. He played the beta and was bored. I don't know how you do that. Like for me, that sounds foreign and crazy. But that's the point. Not everything is for everyone. That'll do it for today. Tomorrow's Diablo Day. So what are you doing to celebrate? What's Diablo Eve like at your house? Are you putting uh, bloody demon head presents under the tree? <laughs> Are you leaving out um, uh, viscera and cookies for uh, uh, Lilith when she comes? You know, all the traditions that we do around Diablo Eve. How are you celebrating for those that celebrate? And if you don't celebrate, hey, that's cool too. I don't know what weird religion you're in, but here in this house. Diablo Eve and Diablo Day are a big deal. Anyway, I'm guessing tomorrow's episode will be maybe somewhat Diablo related. Look forward to the podcast later this week. Probably going to happen Friday because of Diablo. Uh, but if you haven't listened to the core podcast, you need to. It's the whole reason this exists. And uh, I think you'll love it if you haven't already checked it out. You can find it at frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your podcasts, including here where the, the entire thing shown in video. And if you're a patron, you get all the extra uncut stuff as well. It's going to do it for me. Now let's get out of here with a video, shall we? Here's Bo Schwartz, my co-host, one of my co-hosts on core, having a real bad day in Elden Ring. We'll see you later. Oh no! Dude, how am I gonna get my runes back?